Tink. And Dink Tink. <laughs> Welcome back to the Julian and Jenna podcast. <laughs> that fucks me up. Can't, it's Jenna and Julian podcast. You already blew it. What do you mean? We were going to prank you guys and just casually It's an alphabetical refer, order. Casually refer to the podcast as the Julian and Jenna podcast <laughs> this week. And this possibly also up. just like hold hands the whole podcast and not address it. Beep, beep, beep. It looks like that didn't work. Welcome back, everyone, to the Jen Julian podcast. Thank Yo, you for you. joining us for another week. Another one. Another one. What do we got, Ot? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we're doing some dumb shit this As you week, can man. see, we are sitting here with our laptops today. We are sitting here with our laptops today because we have written a whole lot of shit. Uh, we had the idea to do a Choose Your Own Adventure podcast where we each write an adventure with multiple choices and sub choices and more sub choices that allows the other person to choose their own adventure and find out what awaits after each decision. Mm-hmm. So we I wrote, each, we each wrote one, but like the, it's a lot of writing. Yeah, it's a lot of writing. All the choices. We, we, we initially planned on doing three stories each to read to each other, but then we started writing. We're like, Whoa, cause we have to write sort of like a whole sub story for each choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I wrote one and Jenna wrote one. Yeah. And we can go through the different choices. We definitely will go through the different choices, even if you didn't pick them, because we ain't wasting this writing. (laughs) Um, Julian, by the way, I like your glasses. Oh, thank you. Julian got glasses for the first time in his life. Boy. I feel like I have to apologize. Why? Because I've, I've, I have said on the podcast before hundred percent that I have great vision and fuck people (laughs) with bad vision. So I'm eating my words. Welcome to the club, Julie. Thank you. Um, It only gets worse and worse, and then things get weirder because you cannot see. Yeah, it's weird because I I genuinely thought my vision was just like there there wasn't better vision. And then I tried on glasses, and I was like, wait a minute, I can see better. And that was like a foreign concept to me. So uh, I do want to say I'm sorry. (laughs) We Um, forgive you. I actually uh, picked out frames that are pretty much identical to Dwight's frames on The Office. They're pretty dope. Which I didn't even realize. Then, they're pre- they're then pretty dope. Steph tagged me in that picture, and I was like, wait, they are exactly the same frame. They're pretty dope. Thank you. Anyway, I appreciate it. So who's going first? Uh, I would say ladies first, but I'm afraid to follow your epic story with my probably not as epic story. Let's do yours first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I get to play, right? You get to I play first. I haven't read anything that you've... No, you get to yeah. play first. All right. All right. I'm ready. I'm excited. Are this you excited? Is exciting. It's All right. exciting. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Choose your own adventure. Scientology has started to bother YouTubers in hopes of them joining the cult and spreading their message. Oh my God. That's too real. They are persistent and relentless in going to lengths that would involve your life becoming that of a Scientologist. Denying would involve a life of fear and that they are going to retaliate against you nonstop. Do you, A, give in to the pressure and join the cult? At least you'll get to meet John, sorry, at least you'll get to meet John Travolta and Tom Cruise. Is John Travolta a side? Yeah. Thing? Okay. Um, <laughs> your YouTube channel becomes a, cr- a series of creepy mind control videos, but at least you're getting millions of views and making a shit ton of money. On the downside, you are now entering an arranged marriage, and Scientology controls every move in your life. The arranged marriage happens to be with Greg Kinnear, but he still thinks he's shooting the movie Stuck on You, so your entire relationship <laughs> is him basically living the plot of Stuck on You every single day. That's choice one. Oh my god. Choice two. Tell them to get fucked, become a clown, go to clown school, and learn how to make balloon bicycles and do magic at kids' parties. But you also learn the incredible secretive side of being a clown. You're now in possession of top top secret confidential information that could dissolve all of the world's governments as we know it. You begin to be initiated into a clown group that is planning a massive conspiracy to overthrow the planet. Or... You become a Scientologist and start spreading their message, but you are purely doing it to further your true career as an investigative journalist. You are undercover and finding out every single dirty little secret that they're hiding. After years and years, you find out that you have enough info and secret footage to release your documentary, Scientology Smology. (laughs) And after its release, you disappear into Disneyland every day for the rest of your life. You found a Mickey costume that you can hide in. I'm choosing the second one. You're choosing the second one? I'm choosing the second one. But so we can we can still hear your other 
adventures. But for now, let's for now let's follow Troy's beat. I'm becoming a clown. So you've become a clown. You are initiated into a a secretive clown group that's planning a a, a worldwide overthrow. Yes. All right. So now that you're in the clown group, A, do you go along with the clown initiative, even though all your friends make fun of you for being a clown and you get bullied on Twitter every day, you wish day in and day out that you can one day live in a world where only clowns and all only clowns existed and all non-clowns would be expelled from earth every time a non-clown was being expelled they would be thrown through the atmosphere (laughs) and the sound of a squeaky clown nose played every single time they exited the atmosphere on loudspeakers across the world that's choice a choice b the whole time you're faking being a clown because you get to you get to eat free cupcakes and muffins each morning and now they they have been Sorry, and you've now been given a genetic power that only the clown community has access to. This power is something that you can't quite figure out, but you've identified certain characteristics of. They include, whenever you honk at someone in your car, instead of the clown honky noise, it blasts the social security number of whoever you're honking at (laughs) at the same volume a a normal car horn would play at. In addition, you can no longer tell time. You don't understand the day as you used to, so you're constantly losing sleep and showing up late to places. And lastly, every time someone squeezes your clown nose, you involuntarily shout out the slogan for either Subway, Allstate, or Home Depot. <laughs> I'm choosing B. Hold on, you have one more choice. What? There's. Why did you write three choices? Because the next one only has one outcome. There's no oh, more okay. choices. Okay. So I did it a little differently than you, I think. Okay. The third choice is... You get yourself way too deep into the clown gang culture and you find every night to be a terrifying existence, not knowing when the next clown thug will run up on you with a squirt gun and potentially end your clown life. Your clown dog poops a lot in this scenario. Nobody knows why except him. He's hiding something from you. You wonder and wonder what it could be, but he's a dog, so he just says bark every time you ask him what he knows. <laughs> I'm choosing B. Choosing B again? Yeah. All right. So you've chosen... Or you've chosen um, that you have a clown superpower and you're not sure exactly what it is, but yeah, you've ex- you've found and I, out and I like that the uh, the horn honks people's social security numbers. Okay, so this is your reality now. There's no more choices. So this okay. is how it ends up. Um, oh, the characteristics were actually signs that you hadn't fully taken to the clown gene altering process, and you're still part human. This worked in your favor though, because there was a clown apocalypse where all the clowns turn into penis eating penis eating monsters. <laughs> Julian! <laughs> they would run around ravaging penis wherever they could find it. Human, goat, uh-huh. famous people, all kinds of penis. <laughs> you luckily have no taste for dick, though. <laughs> oh You're slowly God. distancing yourself from the clown affiliations you once had. You end up with a disturbed past life and a new life stuck worrying about your penis not being <laughs> eaten on a daily <laughs> basis until you die and go to clown hell. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. <laughs> That's your existence. That's better than being in Scientology, though, TBH, right? TBH. Half clown, <laughs> guarding your peen. But I don't have a peen. What happens to girl clowns, clownettes? Um, you still eat penis, but you obviously don't have a penis <laughs> to be eaten. Okay. Okay. Um, do you want to hear the other outcomes? Yeah. Okay, so uh, if you would... All right, so... Let's just play it again. Let's play it again? Okay. So the Scientology thing, do you want to join in this time? Let's join in this Give time. in to the pressure? Okay, Let's so give in to the pressure. You've given in to the pressure of the cult, okay. and you get to meet Tom Cruise, John Travolta, and you're married to Greg Kinnear. Tight. So, moving forward, you are happily divorced with Greg Kinnear. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because he won't stop reliving yes. stuck yes. on you? Yes, you got divorced very early on. You fought hard to maintain the ability to make YouTube videos, except now you have to send every single video you create to Diamond Donson, the head of content partnerships for the Church of Scientology. You, instead of ask people to subscribe to your channel, have to tell them to subscribe and join to the search of Church of Scientology. If you try to skip an upload or upload without getting approval on a video, they're at your house within an hour with paintball guns shooting Ferrero Rocher. At you, the little chocolate, <laughs> the, yeah, that's how it, candy, yeah. So instead of paintballs, that's what comes Hazelnut, out. Hazelnut, chocolate, yes. candy, Ferrero Rocher, Ferrero Rocher, <laughs> Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> They're delicious, but they hurt you. Do you a continue to upload as they have said and suffer no pushback? B quit uploading and try to delete your channel. C skip an upload so you can collect the most Ferrero Rochers you can possibly get. <laughs> That one. That one? Okay. Yeah. 
You go on a 40-day binge of eating nothing but Ferrero Rocher. You get so <laughs> sick of eating them by themselves that you have to get inventive and create new recipes just using the ingredients inside of a Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> you invented the Ferrero Rocher dog, which is basically just Ferrero Rocher in a hot dog bun with melted Ferrero Rocher on top. But for some reason, it becomes a worldwide phenomenon. You make billions of dollars atop the Ferrero dog empire. You then use your winnings to convert the Church of Scientology into a fully functioning Willy Wonka chocolate factory that exclusively produces Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> that's your life. You're such a shit. That's your, that's your life. Do you want to know what would happen if you were to quit uploading and delete your channel? Yeah. If you qu- try to quit uploading and delete your channel, your channel was linked to all of your pet's brains. So oh when you press God. delete, you actually deleted their brains, and now they just wander aimlessly throughout your house, eating the wood floor and mumbling college football fight songs. Oh they no longer accept love, give love, or poop. They just pee a lot. <laughs> they spend more time of the day peeing than not peeing. So your house has essentially become a sewer. Oh, my God, Julian. <laughs> All right. If you continue to upload and just do what they say. Yeah. You find yourself 10 years later with nothing to show for the subscribers you once earned on your channel. You are branded head to toe, literally with tattoos represented, representing Tom Cruise, uh, Tom Cruise's new religion called Plato Dick Jokes, (laughs) where the entire religion (laughs) revolves around making dick jokes about Plato, the philosopher. All of your hardcore subscribers came with you, but since Plato Dick Jokes is supped such a hypnotizing religion, they all think that they are now Tom Cruise, and they won't stop tweeting you asking you to review Mission Impossible 44 on your YouTube channel. <laughs> oh my god, Julian. You like that one? Yeah. That one's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, so we have one more um, outcome. It's not the clown one. You picked that one. This is C. You become a Scientologist, start spreading their message, but you're doing it to expose them in your documentary. Right. Uh, okay. A. You end up loving Scientology. Oh, it's so fun. You bail on your original plan to be undercover and you just become a full blown Scientologist Stan. You get to shock people into oblivion for just not believing expensive garbage that your scam cult tries to push on people, and you live for it. You hang out in the sauna with Tom Cruise every day and night. (laughs) B. Years down the line, you're on the cusp of the biggest takedown of any organized religion the world has ever seen. Right before you expose the Church of Scientology, you were uploading your vid to YouTube, and you realize the whole time you were filming anything inside the church, due to an invisible Snapchat geofilter on Scientology premises, all of your footage now just shows Gary Busey facial expressions overlaid on top of the original video. And for audio... You hear the mushy sounds that Guy Fieri makes when he he gels his hair with bacon grease every morning. Your oh, film is now useless, and you don't God. know where to turn. C. Oh my God! Uh, you wake up one morning and you don't have <laughs> you don't have any memory of the past two years. You're naked and wet inside a blank room. You step on something sharp. It's a giant class ring, and then another step. You step on another ring, and then another, and another. All the floor has to walk on is nothing but fat class rings that have nothing to do with any school you ever went to. You realize you've seen them before, but you don't know where. They look like something you used to watch on TV, and you start to remember something. Then in the background, you hear, I want you to get excited. You're immediately triggered. You realize all those rings that you're stepping on are Dr. Phil's random big rings that he wears on his show. (laughs) <laughs> on his fake doctor fingers. You are in fake doctor purgatory. You haven't fully died yet, but you are not in the afterlife yet either. You have to get yourself so excited about your life that you can finally <laughs> die and have peace. <laughs> da, 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 da. I'm guessing you're picking that one. That's the one I want. Okay, so then here's here is your life now. This existence has grown on you. 45 billion years have passed, and you have made decent friends with Dr. Phil. By this time, he's finally actually gotten his PhD, uh, and he stays up late with you talking about boys and what's got you down. (laughs) He's the BFF you wish you had, but instead you lost all your memory and don't even know who you are. Wait a minute. Dr. Phil isn't talking to you. Dr. Phil is talking to himself. You are Dr. (laughs) Phil! (laughs) That's your life! You're welcome! Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? Look how I wrote the last sentence. 
<laughs> da, 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 da. Um, let me read you the other two outcomes. Oh my god, go for it. So the first one is if you end up loving Scientology, your outcome is you're a Scientologist and you suck. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, the second one is with the Gary Busey sabotage mm-hmm. of your documentary. Snapchat filters, yeah. yeah. You spend every day for the rest of your life trying to exact revenge on Snapchat. You try to break into their offices, steal their confidential information from the garbage outside their offices. You send you send mean and try to bully Snapchat on Snapchat to Snapchat's account every day. <sighs> then years pass and you soon realize that Snapchat, the Snapchat goes, is trying to tell you something. He comes into your apartment all the time and talks to you in some foreign tongue. But you don't understand it. It just sounds like gibberish. You go back to school and major in everything. 66 years later, you've achieved 66 degrees in college, and you're the single most decorated college student to ever live. The Snapchat ghost comes to you one day, and you get so excited because you know that you can finally understand him. He leans into your ear, pulls you closer, and whispers, Never gonna give you up. Oh, Never gonna- my <laughs> God, Julian. <laughs> I'm leaving. All right. Well, you, you just have no fucking choice. rickroll me I did. in a choose your own adventure story. You got rickrolled if you chose that one, but you didn't. So only you guys got rickrolled, not Jenna. How did I do? Was that okay? Yeah, it was really good. I liked it a lot. That you was did? Very creative. I, I literally. Particularly like the bits of Ferrero Rocher and Dr. Phil. If anything's going to. And Gary Busey Snapchat filter. I'm glad you liked it. If anything's going to ever make Willy Wonka, um, Willy Wonka's actual chocolate factory come to life, it's going to be Ferrero Rocher Dog. <laughs> God, really. I just like how you keep saying it different every time you say it. Ferrero Rocher. Ferrero Rocher. Ferrero Rocher. Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> You know, writing that, that writing this, um, there were times when I actually felt like I was falling asleep. You know, when you fall asleep while you're watching TV and you start to like have what's happening on TV kind of blend into like a fake. Yeah. That's how I felt writing this. I felt like I was going a little nuts. Oh, you were in a trance. I felt like I was in a trance. Julian was in a trance when he wrote that genius about Frere Rocher. I was in an If trance. someone tries to steal that idea though, we're going to know where you got it. We're going to know where, where it came from. It came from this brain. The brain of the man who has 66 college degrees. I've every- always said that. That Why hasn't anyone ever done that? Like they're Majored a, in everything? No, a, being a professional college student. So <laughs> you when have you're, said that. I, I when you're that. done with college, you go to like another four-year college, but then you review colleges from the perspective of a student. Like maybe you're you like spend, a college critic, but yeah, you, you Maybe you spend like info. one year, one semester at a school, and then that's your job. You just go and you see what it's like to be at that school, and then you write a comprehensive guidebook for all prospective students as to what schools are awesome. It's, it's a very good idea, and I think good schools, good universities would welcome that. Bad universities would be like, yo, don't come here. I don't want you exposing <laughs> our shit. We don't want you here. Yeah. Boy. Imagine that, though. What'd you major in? All. All of it. I majored in everything. All of it. <laughs> that would suck. Yeah. Your whole life is just studying for tests. Yeah, no. I yeah. And going to formals. I mean, that would be lit. <laughs> you're like you're like seventy. You're like, who am I going to go to formal with? <laughs> I'm a science major. Oh All right. My God. All right. Well, I guess it's my turn to play now. <laughs> so my that was really good, Julian. I really enjoyed that. I'm my glad. structure is a little bit different. So the, the like prompt, the story prompt has A, B, and C as choices. And then from there, everything has an either or. So there's only Got two it. options. Okay, yeah, so it is different. Cool. All right. So here's the prompt with three choices. It turns out that your phone has an inbuilt recording device that has documented every phone call you have ever made and what was said. It also has been able to record conversations you've had when it's been in your pocket, close to you. So every shitty thing you have ever said about your friends, colleagues, family, partner is on file. Hackers have gotten this information and are planning on leaking this to the people you have slammed. Do you A. Smash the phone, hope to hell that works, then flee the USA and set up a life in another country off the grid. You will never let anyone know of your whereabouts and will live out of the rest of your days chopping firewood and hand-making weapons and pooping in the forest. Or will you B, write sorry notes to everyone you know for all the things that they are about to find out, throw an, throw an I'm an asshole party, and ply them with alcohol in the hopes they forgive you. You will also present each of them a check for $1,000 for damages, plus offer psychiatric help to those who need it. 
or C, contact a scientist to come up with a mind erasing drug that you will administer to all your phone contacts so they will never remember all the shitty things you've said about them. Then ensure you will never use a mobile phone again and rely only on sending letters to all correspondents from now. Um just purely logistically, I don't think C is possible because how are they just going to forget the things that you want them to forget and remember everything else? Like mm-hmm. remember that who they are, that you're, that you're your friend. So I'm going to go, I, you know, I've always, I've always fantasized about going off the grid and chopping wood and pooping in the forest. So I'm going to go with A. All going right. off the grid. Here we go, baby. Here we go, baby. Choose their own adventure. Uh, I didn't want to forget. Um, Camille Hudson made this comment suggestion on one of our podcasts. So shout out to Camille. Camille. Thank you for this. All right. Here you go, Julian. Yep. You find yourself deep in the woods of New Zealand. You're barefoot. You're tired. You're almost out of fried rice. You packed for yourself for your flight because you've only just arrived like an hour ago. (laughs) Tight, you say to yourself, (laughs) as you rip the bottom of your pant leg off to make a tourniquet for the paper cut you got on your finger from your plane ticket. You plop down on the ground, start wrapping your tourniquet around your shoulder for some reason. I guess that paper cut is really fucking brutal. And you look up to the beautiful sunshiny sky and yell, why, God, why have you stranded me here? Well, you've isolated yourself, but, you know, you've been there for an hour and it's getting rough. When suddenly you hear a rustling to your left. What the fuck is that? You audibly yell. Do you, A, go investigate the noise or B, Start running to your right. Can I make a couple comments real quick? Yeah. Okay. First of all, the fried rice bit. Very accurate. I feel like I'm already in this story. Mm -hmm. And the paper cut. I definitely cut my finger on my plane ticket Mm because I cut my finger on everything. Yeah, you made a tourniquet around your shoulder for that because it's getting bad out there. It's getting bad. I'd like to think I would run towards it to investigate, but I'm a big old pussy. (laughs) I would probably run away. You're going to run away? Yeah, let's, let's go with run away. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Oh, man. You make off like the wind, but like really noisy, crunchy wind. (laughs) All of those years of playing video games have finally paid off as your cardio at this point is nothing short of exceptional. Your fingers are pointed at the sky as you pump your arms almost completely up and down, (laughs) which isn't even helping you go faster. In fact, you really just look like a complete asshole. Crunch, 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 go your feet. You look down and see that you've accumulated some debris in your toes. Sticks, twigs, a McDonald's cup. Ooh, I wonder if there's anything in there. I'm starving. You one leg run for a minute and check the cup. Other arms still pumping straight up at the sky. Rats, just as I thought. The cup was literally filled with rats. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's sometimes totally has rats in their food. And, you know, you know that thanks to the Internet. You reach a small river and without even thinking, you just run straight into it. Waist deep. And then you, you <laughs> and then you begin to move. There's a current. It's only a waist high current. You're not in danger. But still, what the fuck is this shit? You start moving down the river when a rowboat knocks you square in the head. WTF, mate, you scream because you've been in this hemisphere for like an hour, so you've already picked up an accent. (laughs) Do you flip the boat over or look to see who's in the boat? So flip the boat over as in like tip them off? Yeah, because you're mad. It just hit you in the head. WTF, mate, or would you like to look and see who's in the boat? I would look to see who's in the boat. Okay. Tight. Let me see Give me a second. (laughs) It's a lot of writing. All right. You're looking to see who's in the boat? Yes. Okay. Who the fuck is in that boat, mate? Why are you driving it like that, mate? You look up and see, (gasps) gasp, (gasps) the ghost of Steve Irwin here to film his hit ghost show, The Crocodile (laughs) Watcher from Heaven. Wow, you are so blessed to finally catch a live taping. You shake his air hand. I mean, your hand really just passes through an apparition. But still, man, it was cool. And he says, sorry for hitting you with my boat, mate. Would you like to be on The Crocodile Watcher from Heaven? And you say, hell yeah. And Steve says, oh, no, 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 no. So you can't say hell on air. You understand? So crocodile watcher from heaven. Okay. Hey, sorry, you say really loud. You hop up into his boat and turn on your camera face, and you are the newest reality TV star in all of heaven. They love the episode. Then they sign you to heaven Illuminati, and you got sacrificed. But whatevs, it was worth it. The end. So you died and went to heaven. You're a star. Not bad. Yeah, but Not then bad. you then you joined heaven Illuminati, and but you got sacrificed. What a ride it's been, you know? What a ride. If you're going to go to the afterlife, I'd say that's the way to do it. 
Mm. I'm happy with my choices. Mm -hmm. What would have happened if we flipped the boat? Okay. You flip that motherfucker over. Nobody hits me in my own head. Nobody. You scream loudly underwater because when you flip the blow, it flipped on top of you and now you're underwater. The water's only way steep, but you have a severe fear of capsized boats you forgot about and your whole head is just in there, man. It's not looking good. You struggle and struggle, but this tin rowboat, man, you just weren't prepared for this kind of survival. You start to see a light, you're choking water and you die. But it's okay, because little did you know, Kim Jong-un actually super hates New Zealand and nuked it the next day. So at least you went with some wow, dignity. Good for you. God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm so glad I died the other way with Steve Irwin, his ghost. That's horrible, Jenna. <laughs> the first thing I thought of when you said in the woods of New Zealand was uh, primitive technology. I was like, oh, I'm just going to imagine that that's me now. Funny you should say that. Would you like to hear I would, an, I would an like, alternative? Yeah, let's hear the alternative choice. So this is when you're in the woods, like right when you find yourself there. Yeah. If, you, if you had chose to go investigate the noise. Yes, yes. You... Sort of quietly, but not really because of your giant man body. Make your way through the thick brush. Your feet keep somehow loudly crunching every branch anywhere in a 20-foot vicinity of yourself. Really, though, how is this happening? It is so fucking loud. Your hands covered in mud because you got hella dirty from being outdoors for one whole hour. Super fast. You pull aside a large leafy branch and look into a small clearing. Is that? No, it can't be. You loudly crunch your way closer to see, oh my god, it is. It's none other than the one and only YouTube superstar Primitive Technology <laughs> hanging out in one of his homemade clay huts. He looks up from his clay kiln in the ground he made entirely out of elements around him and says, Oi, fuck off out of here. Do you beg him to talk to you for just a second so you can explain your situation or fuck off out of here? I beg him. Okay. Let me get there. Me, this is like seven pages long. Yeah, you wrote like very descriptive prose. All right. So you, you chose to talk to yeah. him. Primitive technology, my dude. I'm a big fan. I've subbed you on YouTube. I love you, dude. You say to him as you kneel next to him, trying to honestly smell him a little, get his scent. You huff in a deep breath of air. Primitive scent. Listen, you say, I've had to go off the grid because of a series of unfortunate events, and I'm out here now. Like, I know you're out here, but, like, I'm really out here, man. <laughs> Let me live in one of your huts and, like, teach me how to take care of myself. Please, man, I have a little fried rice to repay you with, or, like, anything you want. Anything I want, oi? He keeps saying oi, but nobody knows why. Oi, you say, anything you want. All right, oi. I want... I want you. Bring that asshole. <laughs> he moans and leans in and wrestles you to the ground. You giggle infectiously. You start making out. Primitive technology tickles you and whispers, It's been so long since I found someone I truly wanted to spend the rest of my life with, oi. And I smelled you just now and I got your scent, oi, and we're just meant to be together. I just know it, oi. <laughs> oi, you say back as you caress his hair. And you lived in the woods happily ever after the end. Oi. Oi. I like that one. Well done. <laughs> I feel like if I went up to him and said, I'm your biggest fan, please let me live in your hut. He'd be like, fake fan. If you were my biggest fan, you'd know how to make your own hut. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, that's good. Okay, so what what other choices did we miss? Let's go through the other ones. Well, do you want to know if if you didn't talk to him and you wanted to fuck off out of here? Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You start fucking off out of here. You keep <laughs> fucking all the way off until nightfall. Oh, no, you think. Where will I sleep? Well, you just keep on fucking off. Fuck off as far as you can until you die. <laughs> you become the first person in the history of ever to die from a couple of hours of starvation and fucking off. The good Me. news... Me. <laughs> the, the good news is, though, that scientists use your body to make great leaps and bounds for people with celiac disease and fucking off now, and everyone can eat weed again, except for you, because you're dead from starving and fucking off. You know what? The I end. took a bullet for the rest of the celiac. <laughs> Shouts out to Julian, the celiac lord and savior. That's what I want to be known as. Oh. And instead of amen, they would just say, fuck off. <laughs> fuck off out of here. Fuck off out of here is, is something we heard Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay say like a hundred times on one of his shows and we implement it in 
everyday language? Pretty much. Pretty much. All right. I think that's all for that storyline. So we have another, we have one or two. So the other choices, the, um, in response to your phone has been hacked and everything. Yeah. So let's do the memory erasing one where I send one. Yeah. Where I send memory, I hire a scientist to erase the memories. So just to recap, in case you've gotten so far lost, uh, your phone has been hacked and every conversation you've ever had on or near your phone has been recorded and hackers are going to release it. So this choice is you contact a scientist to come up with mind erasing drug that you'll administer to all your phone contacts. So they'll never remember anything. OK, here we go. You pull slowly up to the driveway and put the car in park. It's just another Tuesday and you're here to pick up your mom for lunch like always. You make your way up the front steps when your mom's two dogs, Puppy and Honey, begin violently barking at you. Dude, like violent. Puppy grabs a hold of your ankle while while Honey somehow flies all the way up to your neck and grabs you by your jugular. Holy shit, you think to yourself. I talk shit about Puppy and Honey too, huh? They don't know who I am. You start screaming, it's Julian, it's me. But the dog's tiny little mouth somehow clench even tighter. Your mom makes it to the door to see what the commotion is. You've... You're relieved until you see her. You're still, you're like, finally, someone can help me. She looks at you and screams, intruder! Get the fuck off my property! I'm gonna call the police! Do you follow her into the house? There has to be a way to make her remember who you are? Or do you make your way to your car where you have some dog treats to try to lure the dogs off of you? Go into the house. Okay. You be go beep beep. Hold on. Mom, you scream. Mom, it's me, Julian, your fucking son. Holy shit. (laughs) That drug was serious. Like, you seriously don't even remember me at all? I only have one son, and he has red hair. And he's a V good hacker. And V single ladies, hit him up, because someday Jenna's going to need a dope-ass sister-in-law. Like, know what I'm saying? Like, someone to get drinks with, like, maybe (laughs) babysit her kids and, like, hang out with the family events. Like, for real, Marlon, don't fuck this up, man. We need a cool family member, dog. You stare at her half blankly and half like you're getting your throat ripped out by a small orange dog that likes to piddle when she's excited. Why the fuck did you just say that, mom? Like, how come you remember Jenna, but you don't remember me, your son, Julian? Because Jenna's fucking awesome. Everybody knows that, she says. (laughs) Oh, you say tight tight she says back now get the fuck out i'm calling the police mom no you scream out of desperation i can prove i'm your son prove it she says do you put on your roller skates and ninja turtle outfit from when you were a kid and show her (laughs) that's what you used to look like every single day or sing her a song only her son would know no i'd fuck i wouldn't sing her a song i would definitely go on my roller skates okay here we go I gotta get down there. Hold on. You put on your roller skates and Ninja Turtle outfit that you used to wear every day. They're kind of small for your man body, but like you're working it. Honestly, it looks good. Tight. Everything's tight. Your feet hover out of your roller skates, but like you're athletic enough to pull it off. See, mom, it's me, you exclaim. You start crying like a little baby at the thought of your own mother forgetting who you are, but also because the Ninja Turtle outfit is like totally cutting your sack in half. She locks eyes with you. Tears start to well up. She opens her mouth and says, I knew it was you. Ha ha. LOL. I started a prank YouTube channel. Ha ha. All right, fam. Make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe. She sets to a camera over your shoulder. Look, they're over here, too. She says she ports out like four different cameras. How the fuck didn't you see those? Ha ha. Stupid. And then your mom became the most beloved prank channel on YouTube. The end. I hate that. I hate that outcome. <laughs> Why did you remember Jenna? Because she's awesome, duh. <laughs> All right. What would happen if I uh, if I left, right? Or no, I don't. Well, if I sang, yeah, that's one. Or instead of going inside the house, you could go get a dog treat. From yeah. The car. What happened if I got the dog treat? Okay, hold on. Let me find it. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Wow. Give me a second. Okay. You make your way to your car. You reach for your glove box. There's always dog treats in there. Aha! 
you found one. A greenie. It's old and hard, but hopefully it'll do the trick. You whip it up to your neck to give it to Honey. She instantly drops to the ground. Puppy lets go, too. They both piddle a little because they're excited and stupid, like how dogs are. <laughs> you break it in half and give one to each. Puppy sits down like a little lady and starts chewing hers with her hands, while Honey somehow doesn't even eat hers. It's just gone. It's like she just <laughs> absorbed it with her mind. <laughs> then Honey looks up at you and says, Sup, Julian? You gasp and clutch your chest. You gasp and clutch your chest because you've been watching so much RuPaul's Drag Race. All of your expressions have subconsciously been affected to become extra. You don't know which one to be more shocked at. The fact that your dog just talked or the fact that this animal just tried to kill you because they forgot who you were, but then remembered who you were. You, you remember me, honey? Oh, good girl, honey. What a good girl. Honey rolls over onto her back and piddles straight up into the air while maintaining <laughs> eye contact with you. Yeah, sorry, she says. And so does your mom. She's just honestly been watching a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race and it has subconsciously become extra. So she's like half pretending. She doesn't know who you are, like the drug erase her brain, because I honestly think she just wants some attention. Oh Puppy continues to meticulously nibble her greenie. She's eating it in a straight line from left to right like a book. What the fuck? Do you go inside and confront <laughs> your mom or keep talking to honey? I keep talking to honey. Okay. I like this conversation. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> you keep talking to honey. Honey, how can you talk? You ask. Oh, because that drug you gave everyone? Yeah, I got into it. I totally thought it was a tiny little bit of like a fresh roasted chicken. At least I thought that's what, like what I imagined while I was eating it. And then I imagined it was a hamburger when I threw it up. But then because you so irresponsibly made and administered a drug that wasn't regulated by the FDA whatsoever, one of the side effects for dogs is like immense growth in speech. So now I can talk. She rolls back up to her feet and somehow piddles straight directly into your pant leg. <laughs> what the fuck? You say your mom comes out of the house and yells, Julie, it's me. I'm just kidding. Mommy's here. Oh, what happened to your neck? And you're like, dude, the dogs bit me. I don't know. And she's like, Joanne, the scammer is my favorite. I'm trying to live my life like that. So honey looks at her and says, honestly, truly. And then pees in six concentric circles. <laughs> the end. You and the honey pedaling. I like that one. That one's good. <laughs> Pedals while maintaining eye contact. <laughs> okay. So if I go inside to confront my mom. These are so much more in depth. Because it's like a like a story. Alright, go inside and confront your mom. C B A. That's what it's like really hard. I know, it's hard to write, like, organization-wise. Mm-hmm. Okay. You storm into the house to confront your mom. Mom, you yell, you remember me, don't you? You're just being fucking extra. Honey told me. She flips her hair exquisitely and says, Oh, my lord, no tea, no shade, no tea, lemonade. But yes, Julian, I'm sorry. I just want you to come over more. I miss you. Mom, don't do that with your mouth. <laughs> mom, you could have just said that. I'm your son. I love you. And she says, I love you too, son. Boy. Okay. Are these all RuPaul sounds? The end. Is that what that was? Tell me. No tea, no shade, no tea, lemonade. Oh my God. Help me. Okay. Do you want to know what would happen if you sang your song, a song to your mom? Instead of putting on roller skates? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So... If when you went inside and you didn't go outside, you didn't get dog treats, you went inside, you confronted your mom and instead of putting on your roller skates and your Ninja Turtle costume, you sang her a song only her son would know. This is that. You rack your brain. What's a song to prove my mom? It's me. Think, Julian, think. Then a light bulb goes off. You got it. You take a deep breath. Take in the light three times. Cover your eyes and sing. Hamotzi lehemi harets. We give thanks to God for bread. Our voices rise in song together as our joyful prayer is said. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Hamotzi lehemi harets. Amen. <laughs> you look up to see your mom. She starts dying laughing. Mom, why are you laughing? 
You just sang the Jewish song for eating bread, dog. Like, everyone knows that song. They teach you that at camp, idiot. Get the fuck out. So you leave your mom's house, and she totally did actually forget who you were. And it's all because you sang her hamotzi. Like, LOL. Even I know that song. LOL. The end. Oh, my God. (laughs) To be fair, I never actually knew that song. What? I knew the Hanukkah song. What? That's different. It's similar, How but different. How could you not know that song? Because we sang the Hanukkah song. Mm, okay. How does that go? Okay. 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 Uh, we have one more outcome, right? Yeah. It's the first one where you throw the party and apologize and give them money. and. Yes. All so. Right. Uh, all of your friends, all of this information is leaked that you're talking shit about them. So you write sorry notes and then you throw a party. It like costs a lot party. of money. Yeah. Depends okay. on how, how much shit you talked, I guess. Are you ready I am, for this adventure? I am, I am RD. All right. It's the evening of your big party. Everyone's invited and excited to finally get to face you in person. You're fixing all of your I'm sorry banners around the exquisite Chuck E. Cheese you chose as a venue. You figured it would help lighten the doom and gloom. Plus, everyone's allowed to order only one drink at a time, only one beer at a time, and have one beer in their hand at a time. Have you ever been to a Chuck E. Cheese? That's how it works. Uh, No, I actually haven't. (laughs) Um, also though, because there will be fucking kids there. Also sidebar, you didn't tell the, this location's manager, Karen, that this was the purpose of your party. Uh, poor Karen, but she also like really clearly doesn't give a fuck what happens there and seems to be on some kind of methamphetamine. Uh, guests are arriving before you know it. The whole room is full of everyone, you know, and their friends for moral support. And without even a moment to welcome them, the verbal abuse begins. You're in the center of a swirling attack from all directions. Not knowing which vitriol to listen to first. You fixate your eyes at the animatronic Chuck E. Cheese. You gaze into his cold, dead, creepy, gross-ass, dusty-ass, crusty-ass expression. (laughs) You're prepared for hours of this. When suddenly, both double doors to the front burst open. A gust of wind hits you in your face and blows those adorable glasses back onto your forehead. (laughs) Do you... A, look up to see who it is, or keep staring at Satan cheese. It doesn't matter who it is. It's going to suck no Satan matter what. Cheese. I need to know who this is who knocked my glasses off my face. All right. Give me a second. Satan cheese. Crusty ass. Dusty ass. You pull your eyes away from Satan cheese somehow. His gaze is super demonic. Cause it's like, it did take a second. That thing is like a portal or something. And look at the door to see none other than Guy Fieri himself. Yes. He stomps his thick thighs and age. In a- <laughs> <laughs> he stomps his thick thighs and age inappropriate heavy black creepers over to you. He pushes six of your friends and also a group of small children into the ski ball machine in one fell swoop with his giant throbbing webbed hands which are also still covered in wing sauce from his appearance on hot ones the kids start crying confused as to how they literally just got attacked by a grown man in a Chuck E. Cheese he turns around and says if you kids don't shut the fuck up I'm gonna fuck your butts oh my god innocent parents unaware of the verbal abuse party start frantically gathering their children and begin (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and begin yeah. dialing them 911. Guy makes his way to you and grabs you right by the wiener. So you're the one that's been talking all that shit about me, huh? Ombre. Ombre. He says ombre because he thinks it's cool, but like with a distinctly American accent, which makes him like sound kind of racist, TBH. You scoff because like it's 2017. Come on, dude. He squeezes your wiener and leans in close, too close. His mouth is now on your mouth. He says into your mouth, (laughs) I heard what you and that little rat face Jenna have been saying about me on your podcast. And I just want you to know. His lips are touching your lips. Are we are we making out? I just want you to know that it's not cool, man. He tongue kisses you really hard and it's spicy too. (laughs) Holy shit. Do you A, keep kissing him back, fuck it, or B, push him off you. I keep kissing him back. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Let me get there. Okay. 
Your mouth is literally inside Guy Fieri's mouth, but somehow you're kissing. Your tongue begins to go numb from the 300,000 Scoville level of hotness that he has left in there from eating chicken wings. Mm, You say into Guy Fieri's mouth, I'm sorry for what I said about you, man. It was just a joke. He twists your wiener directly up, which is super hard right now, by the way, because how could you not? And he says into your mouth, (laughs) it's okay, dude. I forgive you, but like, respect me. I do, you say. He lets go of your mouth with his mouth and lets your boner just hang around there. Uh, Fuck, at least uh, he's done squeezing it. Then he slaps you on the butt, winks at you, and turns around to leave. The cops tackle him to the ground for assaulting minors, and he looks up at you, you down at him, and he yells out, When I get out of jail, I'm still gonna fuck your butts to the kids! (laughs) Which is, like, so horrible. But you think to yourself, he'll always be the one that got away. He will. The end. Oh, 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 God. <laughs> Do you want to know if you push him off? Yeah. Okay. You push Guy Fieri off, off you, which is no easy feat. Like, it literally took all of your energy. Holy shit, that is a big man. Look, I'm sorry, Guy, you exclaim. It's just a joke, dude. Relax. And stop fucking kissing me, man. I've only had one beer today, and I'm not drunk enough for that shit. Karen, the meth manager, comes over and tries to break up the situation, (laughs) but she's not even making English words at this point. Plus, she's speaking directly into your forehead, which is super not helpful and like downright distracting. (laughs) When all of a sudden you hear this awful noise. What the fuck was that? Guy looks at you, concerned. He holds his own butt and says, damn it, I pooped myself again. (laughs) Everyone starts laughing and then suddenly no one's mad at you anymore because Guy Fieri just pooped his pants. He walks out with his poop pants and says everyone else. Oh, that's a great ending. I love that ending. I like how he said pooped himself again. (laughs) Um, So the last choice is if I stare at Chuck E. Cheese instead of look at the door. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, so if you it's B if you don't look up to C. Yeah, stare yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter who's at the door. Nothing matters, honestly. Fuck it all. You stare deep into Chuck E. Cheese's eyes. Wow, it's like way totally dead in here, you think. The walls around you become fuzzy. Everything is getting distorted. You can't even really hear what anyone is saying anymore, which is like kind of a good thing because a bunch of fuck you, you little jujitsu bitch just came out, which really does hurt your feeling because jujitsu is a great sport and should be left out of this. You keep gazing. It's almost as if you're moving closer to him. You keep gazing. Oh my god, wait, you know what? You are actually moving closer to him. His eyes are a demonic portal, and you're getting sucked. Oh, oh my god, we're in hell. Uh, I'm in hell right now. <laughs> Would you look at that? Chucky Cheese's eyes are an actual demonic portal. I can't wait to post this on Snapchat. Do you pull out your phone to try to take a Snapchat, or B, start checking the place out? Definitely Snapchat. Okay. Here we go, BB. You pull out your phone to take a Snapchat, and surprisingly, there's, like, such good service down here because it's where the owner of Comcast, AOL, and Time Warner live. Oh, so it's, like, fuck. lightning fast down here. Like, damn, life hack. You have it first facing or you. death hack. Yeah. You, have it, you first have it facing you. Hey, guys, so funny story. I'm in hell right now. What the fuck? Oh, uh, you double tap and flip the screen around and show the fiery lava pits and souls being tortured. Post. You go to your Twitter. Scroll through your mentions. What? What the hell? Pun intended. Fake. Fake. This is fake. Julian, you're fucking stupid. Well, that one was unnecessary. Fake. Everyone thinks this is fake. Damn it. Then you never actually figured out a way out of there, which is why you realize so many people go missing from Chuck E. Cheese's and everyone thinks your Snapchat is fake. The end. Okay. A. Why aren't there geofilters in hell? And B. If everyone thought it was fake, I would have just scrolled over to the temperature... Snapshot filter, and it would be my it would be <laughs> five hundred thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. That was good though. Okay, right. so if I go look start around, checking the place out. Yeah, what you start walking around hell, but you can't help but say to yourself, 
when in hell, <laughs> lol, you come up to this weird little opening of fire, and when you see a man relaxing in an easy chair, reading a book by flaming eternal hell light, who is that? You lean in closer and see, oh, oh, it's Adolf Hitler. You get scared, but then you're like, when in hell, lol, and then you're like, hey man, fuck you. But then you forget he speaks German, so he actually just pulls his fire blinds shut, and it like totally catches you on fire, and then you burn there. And but it's fast and painless, so what else? So I got I got burned by Hitler in hell. Yeah, I'm glad I made out with Guy Fieri then. Mm -hmm. Never thought I'd say that sentence. Mm. Actually, I did. Who are we kidding? Totally. I. Bravo. I mean, your writing is just... I felt like I was there the whole time. I mean, I feel like I was just making jokes, but hats off. That was just... That was... Did you have fun? Uh, that was fun. I like that. Now yeah. I know I got to step my shit up for the next time. I also know that like, I want to I wanna do the... This or this. Like, yeah. either or. I like that. Because it, it keeps the storyline more linear. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty fun. That was fun. That was fun. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed us playing uh, Choose, <laughs> Choose Your Own, own Adventure. adventure. <laughs> um, if you want us to play it again, uh, maybe give us some ideas of uh, different themes that we can use. Um, or, you know, even if you have adventures you'd like us to, to play, let us know. Uh, but I, I definitely enjoyed this. That was this really was a lot fun. of fun. This is like a lot of pages. One, two, three. Four, yeah, I had. Five, I think I had four and six, a half. You had seven, eight, yeah, nine, four, ten. Five. Are you? Well, you have half. double spacing, dude. Wait, Some rookie, rookie those. move, double spacing this your essay to get more pages. That right oh, there. That, that, that is the is default. Double spaced. It's okay. I, I remember when I was in college and high school and I had to get more pages on my essay. Boy, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What size font is that? That's because I copied and pasted that. What's wrong with you? 18 point font. Yeah, that part. The rest of it's 12. <laughs> Exposed. Oh my God. It's the last time I'm ever writing you fucking choose your own adventure. No, don't get mad. You were just rubbing in my face that I only had four pages and you had 30. <laughs> <laughs> Ferrero Rocher. Um, Guys, Whatever start, will be. I'm starting. Ferrero I'm starting Rocher. a Kickstarter to fund Ferrero Chair Factory, where we can make <laughs> Ferrero Chair dogs. We can't with. eat that, dude. It's fucking. It's milk chocolate. Um, you don't piss where you eat. <laughs> this is my business. Okay, I'm not eating it. I'm. I'm using it to make money. You're nasty. Ferrero Chair. Also, that is the single most delicate candy in the world, or dessert in the world. How could you shoot that out of a paintball gun? You can't. You can. <laughs> you can actually though. Oh, I hate you so much. Good job. Good job. That was fun. That was fun. In all actuality, she wrote a fuck ton. You guys know that. Um, but yeah, we'll do it again. And I'll see you guys next week for another podcast. Thank you so much. Bye, Dave.